have unlocked the eternal link to internal source. The key of imagination, your admission. Access to the enlightened dimension. A gateway at the junction of darkness and light. The place at which the chaos of our conditioned frame of mind give way to a life in constant flux, only to be mastered through vigilant discipline. Peaceful times may come, testing times may go. This is the ebb and flow. The father of biohacking, Dave Asprey of Bulletproof. Hey, man, thank you so much for joining me here on the Ebb and Flow today. Happy to be here, Evan. Uh, first of all, Dave, I just have to say I'm such a huge fan of you and your company, and uh, I think it's profound what you've done to inspire a lifestyle um, I think it's just awesome. As a, as a former pro football player coming out of my career, uh, very intuitively, I realized that I hated eating breakfast. <laughs> I was never hungry in the morning. So I found myself intermittent fasting pretty organically, just sticking to a cup of coffee. Then a buddy of mine said, hey, have you heard of this guy, Dave Asprey? He started this bulletproof coffee because he met with Sherpas in the Himalayas who showed him how to make uh, yak butter tea. And I was like, that's my guy. And it really started me on my, on my own personal biohacking journey. So I have to thank you for that. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, it, it's awesome. And, and that it's a movement. It's a community the whole biohacking thing. And Bulletproof Coffee, it works. And I keep finding new reasons and ways that it works. And... I mean, 10 years ago, like, what if you have this instead of breakfast? And mm. it, it's a form of intermittent fasting. And it's it's one of the things that helped intermittent fasting become a, a trend. It's one of the things that helped keto become a trend. And I, I ended up writing Fast This Way, my new fasting book, because I've seen the mistakes that people make. I've made the mistakes over 10 years, helping people lose a million pounds. Like, it's not as hard as people think it is. And doing it wrong has a downside that takes a while to dig out of. So I, I thought this is a, a time to do it. It's, mm. it's, it's very easy to, to write a book on fasting. Step one, don't eat for a while. Step two, <laughs> here's a bunch of science from the internet that says it's good for you. Woohoo, I wrote a book, but like I, do, I did not want to write that book. There's actually really good books on fasting out there. This is a book on, on the mindset, on the biology behind the mindset why it's hard to fast, how to turn off those switches, like biological switches, so that you don't feel any pain and so that it's easy and so that you feel better than you otherwise would. And then there's a spiritual side of fasting that just gets edited out. And I think it's really important to acknowledge that. So that's a big part of the, the storyline of the book. Dude, I love that. I love that. Well, um, I, I think, you know, for this conversation, you're such a, a massive wealth of knowledge and uh, you've got so much great insight into how to transform your body through food, through supplements, through fasting. I think what's so fascinating to me and why I love the Bulletproof method, the Bulletproof movement so much is it's almost as much about what you're not eating as what you are eating. Um, and on top of that, Fasting is a huge component of it. And fasting has become really, it's something I use every single day. Today, I didn't eat until 3, 3, 3 p.m. And uh, that's just what makes me feel good. I feel best right. <laughs> on that. You know, I feel like I can't really get much work done when I'm eating, you know, and I think there's, uh, there's very legitimate scientific and physiological reasons behind that. Whereas when your body is processing food, it has no time to really do anything else or energy. And you can, I'm sure, ex expand on that. But so for you, or, or I guess let's just jump into it. Why, what is it about fasting? Why is fasting such a powerful tool that anyone can really implement into their daily regimen or their lifestyle? Well, I believe that everyone when you really get down to it is fundamentally lazy. <laughs> and 
I, I can prove it because that's how life is wired. Our cells do that. All bacteria do that. Every plant does it. We don't waste energy. And when you look at, okay, what are all the things you could do to be healthier? You could spend more than 24 hours a day doing all kinds of health practices, right? Like, oh, you know, look at me. I, every minute of every hour was spent on, you know, taking a supplement, being healthy, meditating, doing all these things. Mm -hmm. But if you could spend one minute per day and get all those results, everyone would be like, yeah, I'll take that one minute, right? So you look at all the things you can do and there's something that, that it's a through line in all of my recommendations, all of my work, and it's return on investment. And it's not how much dollars you invest, it's how much energy do you put into something and how much energy do you get back, right? And if you have enough energy, you can always make use of time if you have time and you can use that energy to make money if you need money. So you don't invest dollars, you invest energy and focus and attention. And fasting is so powerful because it requires less work than preparing breakfast. <laughs> so it saves yeah. you time and money there. And it doesn't just affect one aspect of your health and your performance. It affects almost all of them mm. because what drives us, whether it's repair of our cells, whether it's our willpower, it's our athletic performance, our cognitive performance, it's how, how good of a job does our body do on making energy? And we take 30 pounds of air and some amount of food every day, and we combine them and we make electrons. And if you're good at combining them, you have a lot of electrons, which is another way of saying you have a lot of energy. Hmm. And that means that you can run at full power. That means you have the energy to, to you know, improve your circumstances, to do personal development, to be a better you know, provider for your family, to be a better athlete, whatever it is you want to do. And so it's a matter of how do I do that? Well, if skipping breakfast or some of the other techniques of fasting, but skipping breakfast is a good example. If it has the power to, at least doing it some of the time, maybe not even all the time, if it has the power to make your cells better at creating energy, that means you have more energy all the time. Mm -hmm. So I put in almost no work and I got better cells. I got less chances of diabetes, less chances of cancer. I'm probably gonna live longer. My risk of heart attacks go down. Oh, and my brain works better right now. And I felt better and my love life improved. So there isn't a higher return on investment behavior. Um, it's as important as breathing. It mm -hmm. is, is this, you know, don't eat all the time. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes so much sense to me. And that's, my, that's been my experience as well with it. Um, it saves time. I mean, that's that to me is the biggest thing. I used to spend so much time preparing meals, making protein shakes, figuring out when I was going to eat again, you know, it, and it's, it takes up, it, it really does. It takes up an immense amount of your day. Um, Especially as a pro athlete, right? I, I mean, yeah. I've, I've worked with a lot of pro athletes and, you know, this idea that, okay, you have to just like pound the protein all the time. And if you want to maintain abnormal muscle mass, you actually do have to do that. Mm -hmm. But even with that, intermittent fasting still gives you better results. Right. right? It, you, you've stopped to eat the X amount of protein per day, but not eating for a brief period of time is going to make you stronger. You'll still perform better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's definitely been my experience with it. And uh, I don't think people realize that when they're thinking about, oh my God, I'm not going to eat. And so how do we, how do we shift that thinking? How does someone go from, holy shit. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. Because I think there's a, there's a whole psychological component of People, people have a deep relationship with food. Food is the number yeah. one drug, right? Food is, people use it to comfort themselves. People use it to not feel things. People use it for all sorts of reasons other than actually fueling their body. Um, and so I think like you're talking about, the psychological component for people is one of the biggest hurdles because it sounds so drastic and we've even been conditioned in a way to think that fasting or going long periods of time without food equals a negative mindset feeling like shit being tired being angry yep. or hangry so how do we re reconfigure that mindset let me talk about how i did it which is the mm. the story in the book and then i'll talk about the the different human drives that are coming into, into fasting. So I used to weigh 300 pounds 
but not linebacker 300 pounds as in fat computer hacker 300 pounds. <laughs> so, uh, and I, I knew I was fat and I said, all right, I'm going to do the stuff that should work. I'm going to work out an hour and a half a day, six days a week, uh, half weights, half cardio. I'm going to go on a low fat, low calorie diet and I should lose the weight. And 18 months later, I still weighed 300 pounds. I still had a size 46 inch waist and I didn't get the results. And well, part of it is I was eating the wrong stuff. And part of it was I was overtraining. And part of it was I had been told if you don't eat at least six meals a day, your body will go into starvation mode. And we've all heard this and it's yeah. just BS. So I was, I realized, you know what? I'm, I'm actually afraid of being hungry. Right. And there's, there's two reasons for that. One is there absolutely is such a thing as hypoglybitchy. Right. <laughs> and I, mean, I, I knew this in, in my, my, my home life, my life at work. If I was like really hungry, I was a jerk. Right. And I don't want to be a jerk. Like we all want to be nice to people around us and we don't want to say stuff at work that gets us fired. And yeah, <laughs> like exactly. that. so I was afraid of being a jerk and I, I was afraid of starving because starving means to die from lack of food. And if you're saying, Oh, I missed lunch, I'm starving. That's the biggest lie you could ever tell yourself. You're not starving. You have 90 days before you starve, right? <laughs> you're just hungry. Right. In fact, you're not even really hungry because it takes longer than that to be hungry. You're having a craving because you don't know how to eat. So I realized I was dealing with this. I also was dealing with the fact that I was afraid to be alone. Right. Mm. And, you know, I did a lot of personal development work and I just realized, wow, like I, I'm really uncomfortable. You know, I, I would rather be with a crazy person <laughs> in a relationship than be by myself. Right. This is deep wiring. That's not, not a conscious choice. So I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to work on this. So I hired a shaman to drop me off in the desert in a cave for four days, no people, no food for 10 miles in any direction. And I'm like, I'm just gonna have to deal with it because I could eat dirt if I want to. And I'm, you know, I'm just gonna have to, to roll with it. And I write about that experience and the, the different things that happens in the body and in the mind going through that. And it's one thing to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I know I'm not going to starve. Right. But when your body says you're starving, or at least you think it's saying that, and you have this physical anxiety from that, um, it's really hard to overcome it. And so here's why this happens. Mm. Every life form on earth follows exactly the same instruction manual. And it's the minimum necessary lazy instruction manual to keep a species alive. And I don't care if you're a bacteria, a mold spore, a skunk, uh, or a tree, you have to do this in this order. Okay, most important step number one with 10 times more focus, run away from, kill, or hide from scary things. Mm. Right? And so uh, for a tree, you know, you have nasty stuff in your sap and a thick bark, right? So you're protected. And if, you know, you're a skunk, you make lots of stuff that smells bad. You're a human, you think you're way out of problems. You know, we all have our defense mechanisms. Yeah. So that means fight or flight does that. And it's, it's really easy to think about it because if something eats you, it's the end of the species. Right. Okay. And now we know rationally that that wouldn't be the end of the species. There's lots of people, but your body doesn't know there's lots of other people. It's dumb. It's run by ancient bacteria that are, that are running this program. It's not you. It, this is a very ancient, not even at the brainstem. It's, it's in every cell of the body. Mm. And so if that gets most of your attention, the second thing that gets five times more attention than it deserves is food mm. because famines have killed most species. So the first F word is fear. The second one is food. And we put lots of attention on this because our species, like all others, has died. Many, many of us have died. And so we think about food a lot. In fact, one of the studies in Fast This Way actually measured this. And they found that in an average person, this is not an overweight person, but an average person, 15% of the thoughts they have every day are about what's for the next meal. Now, if you could turn off that voice in your head, so it just didn't ask that, imagine if you had 15% more mental power every day. Totally. Right? You can, right? And you know, because you've, you've felt that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But there's a third F word that all life has to do to make sure it stays around. You know what that F word is? I think so. Fornicate? Oh, they, I, I was thinking fertility, but you could just go for the dirty deed if you want, Evan, you know, whatever makes you happy now. That's yeah. where my mind goes, man. It's the, no, it is that F word and fertility is the same thing anyway. Yes. Um, so yeah. And that gets three times more attention than it really needs anyway. Cause everyone on earth has been like, if I don't, you know, hook up with this person, you know, I'm going to die. Like you just, you have, it feels like a need, but the reality is, you know, you're not going to die. You mm. just feel like you are. 
Yeah. And so if the body is sending you signals that says you're going to die, right? And, you know, one of the scariest things, at least in, in North America, the single scariest thing you can do in, in studies is public speaking, mm. getting up on stage. Okay. We know you're not going to die. Like, like right. we know it, but it is so fundamentally bone chillingly scary for most people. Yeah. Right. So there's a mismatch between the signal from our biology and the reality of the world we live in and understanding that it comes from ancient survival is, is really cool because now you're saying, okay, if my body's telling me I'm starving, but I know I'm not starving, what's actually going on here and who's calling the shots. Mm. And, and suddenly you realize, okay, I am feeling physical anxiety because I'm hungry. Why? Right. And the reason is that the cells in the body, I mentioned they're lazy. Well, they're saying if you don't stuff food in your mouth every couple hours, we're going to have to do this incredibly expensive biological process, which is we're going to have to kill the weak energy producing cells and replace mm -hmm. them with young, strong ones. Do you know how much work it is to like get rid of the young ones and replace them or the old ones, replace them with young ones. We don't want to do that. We're lazy. Couldn't you just go have sex already? So the species could reproduce. Okay. <laughs> this is going on in your cells. So what you do though is use train cells. Hey guys, you think you're the boss because you're running this ancient instruction manual, but you're not the boss. I'm the boss. So for a brief period of time, you're going to man up and you're just not going to have any energy and you are going to have to learn how to be strong. And when you do this regularly, it changes your whole biology. And all of a sudden, when you do have food, your body's much better at using it. You're better at turning that 30 pounds of air and a pound or however much food you eat into energy. So your ability to function in the world goes up. And when you're not eating, something magic happens. And one of the reasons that the Bulletproof diet worked is I'm like, guys, stop eating the stuff that causes inflammation and makes you weak. Well, when you're fasting, you don't eat anything that takes away energy. And that's mind blowing for a lot of people. Cause like, what do you mean stuff that makes you weak? Like it's just food. It's like, no, different foods do different things. We can survive on all kinds of crap, but if you want to have a brain that really works and cells that are replacing themselves and just to be in the zone, you actually have to choose the right foods, which means not choosing the wrong foods. Many plants, I mentioned that, that first fear word, run away from kill or hide. Plants can't run away because they have roots. Mm -hmm. So they cover themselves in spines and all sorts of toxic chemicals. Can we eat them? Yes. Are we going to feel awesome after we eat them? Probably not. Will we die of starvation? No, it's really useful to be able to eat food that isn't good for you and still survive. But most people, before they start fasting, they eat shit. And they don't know it. It might even be labeled as healthy, like, oh, kale and bell peppers, right? And, and then hummus. Oh, gee, I'm so healthy. And then the next morning, they're like, ah, if I don't have breakfast, I'm going to punch someone. Like, you're not having hunger right now. You're having a craving. Mm. You're having a craving because you punched yourself in the face with your last meal and you didn't know it. So part of what's in Fast This Way is, hey, here's what to eat so that you're not hungry after you eat. Like, but how many times in your life have you finished a meal and a half hour later, you're like, I want sugar. Like I, oh I want a God. snack. Yeah. Right. That means you ate your last meal wrong because right. when you eat a meal properly, you don't want to touch food for four hours and someone can put cookies in front of you and you're like, you know, I just don't want a cookie because I'm actually full. Yeah. And here's why fasting is really cool. There's these two hormones that control a lot of our hunger. And one of them is called ghrelin. And this is, the, is they call it the hunger hormone. And the other one is called CCK or cholecystokinin, uh, which is the fullness hormone. Hmm. And when you fast, you can, especially if you're an experienced faster, even just for skipping breakfast, you can bump your ketone levels in the blood. These are the fat burning molecules. Normally it takes about two days of full fasting to get those turned on if you're not using the fasting hacks in the book. But when you do that, it magically turns down ghrelin and it turns up CCK and that turns off the voice in your head. So you get that 15% of your thoughts back, but you just don't care about breakfast. Yeah. And then lunchtime rolls around. And when I was fat, I, I remember this meeting. I mean, I can just say it like I, I there's Dave, photos of me, you know, I, I was big. Right. Um, and I, I remember I ended a meeting once I was like, 
guys, it's 1145. I know we're supposed to go till noon, but I'm going to have to kill you and eat one of you. <laughs> like, I can't focus anymore. I'm just going to the cafeteria. Like, we're done. And I just left, right? And there's like eight people at the meeting and it was my meeting. And I kind of felt like a jerk, but I was like, I can't do this. Like, I'm so hangry. And that's not how it's supposed to be. And right. you can turn that off in just entirely. And so that that's the idea behind fasting is get those ketone levels up a little bit. So once you become someone who has a regular fasting practice, it's less of an issue. But when you first start doing it, it's almost impossible. You got all these, you know, health influencer types um, who are like, oh, you know, my job is just to look good on Instagram. And, you know, today I'm going to wake up. I don't have kids. So I'm just going to drink my green tea and I'm going to make like a kale latte and, you know, la di da, whatever. It's pretty easy to pull off whatever you're going to do there. But if you have kids and you have a demanding yeah. training uh, going on, you have a job, it's even worse, you have a job, you're working from home and you have two young kids hanging off each arm. You're telling me I'm going to skip breakfast. Like yeah. I barely have enough to focus right now. So the innovation there it, for fast this way is there's three fasting hacks that turn off the distraction from food. These are direct manipulations of your biological state that allow you to continue the benefit of a fast without feeling hungry. I love it. You want to go Hit through me. those three from the book? Hit me, man. Yeah. All right. So the first one is just good old fashioned black coffee. So there are people out there, um, they're, they're purists and they say, well, in the mouse studies of fasting, the mice only had water. Uh -huh. Therefore you can only have water during fast. Those people are wrong. Mm. And the reason for that is that mice don't have espresso machines. <laughs> um, <laughs> however, we do have thousands of years of fasting history throughout the entire world. And I talk about that in one of the chapters on spiritual fasting in the book about, you know, how do you actually feel the, 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 I don't want to call it the pain, but how do you feel the full range of emotions from fasting to go from elation to hunger to all in between? Uh -huh. And then how do you use those to become a stronger person? That's a different, uh, a different vibe than what I'm talking about here. You end up just looking at how fasting is going to work if you have a life and you say, okay, what's black coffee going to do for me? Well, black coffee doubles the amount of ketone production. Mm. So just a, you've already just a black coffee, just a black coffee, no MCT in there, no butter, nothing. No, just black coffee. Now you okay. might want to do the mold free coffee because toxins yeah. in coffee will give you sugar cravings. And yeah. I've written about that. There's 34 studies supporting that. There's still a few people who were influenced by Joe Rogan, who was trying to sell a competitor's product when he's like, Dave was like, no, 34 studies, guys, that, that, that ship has sailed. It is. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> so. Um, I would say get the, the bulletproof beans because they make a difference. Anyhow, uh, if you don't, by the way, if anyone does or doesn't buy bulletproof beans, it will not change my life. Thank you very much. Bulletproof is, is very successful, but it will change yours, which is why I'm willing to talk about it. <laughs> They're fantastic. So, thank you. I had three cups of it myself. But anyway, this caffeine doubles ketone production. So think about it like this. If you do what I recommend in the book and you have an earlier dinner, like ideally as the sun's going down or before it goes down, um, you'll sleep better that night if you have an earlier dinner, but you might have three or four hours before you go to bed. So you got three or four hours of fasting and you sleep for eight hours. You just went 12 hours without food. Mm. And then the caffeine doubles your ketone production. And now you've started turning off the hunger hormone. You started turning on the fullness hormone. That's amazing. However, if you're just getting started on intermittent fasting, that's probably not going to be enough, but it'll help. So the second one is, yes, bulletproof coffee. A little bit of grass-fed butter. You don't have to put two tablespoons in unless you're going to be you know, really hitting it hard. You can put even just a teaspoon. And it changes some of the chemistry in the water. This is based on new science that was not in any of my previous books. I funded research at the University of Washington about basic water chemistry. Mm -hmm. And it turns out tiny droplets of butter fat in water change the water so your body can more easily use it to make energy. It's why the Tibetans blend their yak butter tea. Mm -hmm. And before they had blenders... Even if they had no running water, they would take the tea, put it in a butter churn, and they would add a little bit of ghee, and then they would churn it for 10 minutes before they would drink it. I thought they were nuts. No, mm. they just figured out it worked. I, now I funded the research that figured out why it works, and it makes me happy. I love that. So butter and MCT oil. The reason you do that is the kind of MCT that I've been recommending for Bulletproof, and Bulletproof made MCT a thing. The reason everyone's using MCT is my work. Yeah. And the C8 MCT that's in there, it raises ketones four times more than the most abundant cheap MCT that's out there and four times more than coconut oil. Mm. So what this does, literally, 
okay, you could take two or three days of eating nothing to go into ketosis, or you could do caffeine plus MCT oil, and you're likely to bump your levels of blood ketones up enough that someone can set a donut in front of you at 10 a.m. and you'll look at the donut and go, I just don't want it. Mm-hmm. Okay. As a fat person, there was never a time in my life that I wouldn't like drool over the donut. And sometimes I'd win and be like, I'm not having the donut. I'm going to turn away. And other times like, man, that's like the glazed one, you know? And like, you just, you do it. Right. And you're, and then you kind of slap yourself after it's like, why did I do that? I said, I wasn't going to, and you feel like a chump, except it's not, it's, it's biology. It's not willpower. Mm. Willpower doesn't work for that. Mm. And the third hack, and this is one that is completely missing from the world of fasting until it comes out in this book. And there'll be a bunch of fasting, the, the hair shirt fasters, I like to call them. Who'll be like, you can't do that during a fast. It's not the same. Well, the science doesn't agree with them. But you know what hair shirts are? Uh-uh. Oh, I love this. So <laughs> back in the 14th century, there was a, a type of, of uh, monk uh, in the, I think they were Catholic. But what they would do is they would, they would weave uh, uh, like a, a shirt out of human hair. Oh so it would be extra itchy because they were such sinners. They needed to suffer. And then they would like self flagellate like hit themselves on the back with a whip, right? Just to suffer more. Yeah. Okay. The water only fasters are the hair shirts uh-huh. of fasting that like, I I'm just going to suffer because the suffering's good. And I'm just going to push through it. I'm like, look, you will get to the point that you can do that. And you can just have water in the morning or just black coffee and you'll be completely fine. And I'm there. Right. But for the vast majority of people hearing this episode to get there, you should teach your cells to burn fat. And you do that by putting MCT oil in your coffee. And people say, but now you've had calories. It's not fasting, except your insulin levels don't change Mm. when you have only fat. Mm. Protein is what changes it or carbs are what changes it. And um, if you have carbs, your insulin certainly is going to go up. But if you have protein that doesn't raise insulin, protein itself turns off something called autophagy, which is a major Mm. benefit of fasting where it tells your body to basically get rid of junk proteins. Uh And it tells it to kill the weak cells or weak cellular components and build new ones. So you've got to be really careful. You don't put protein and you don't put carbs in your coffee, except for the third fasting hack. Uh And the third fasting hack that's in the book is prebiotic fiber. And this Mm. is a weird form of carbohydrate that your body can't digest. And the good thing about fiber is it is, and this is prebiotic soluble fiber, not like roughage. And that stuff is really cool because since you can't digest it, it doesn't raise insulin levels at all, but it's shown in lots of studies to enhance human lifespan. It grows good bacteria in the gut and it really strongly suppresses hunger. So if you want to get started with the easiest possible intermittent fast, where you're like, I can't believe I'm more full than if I had an egg McMuffin, what you do <laughs> is you have your black, uh, your black coffee, you add your MCT, the brain octane uh, uh, MCT oil. Then you add a little bit of butter and you add prebiotic fiber and you blend it up. And what does it taste like? It tastes like a latte, right? The prebiotic fiber has no, uh, no flavor to it whatsoever. And then you drink this thing and you're like, oh my God, I'm so full. And by the way, for the first time in my adult life, I hit the FDA recommended level of soluble fiber. <laughs> so like, it's actually good for you, but your insulin's solid, but most important, your freedom Like, I just don't Uh care about food. Like all food has lost its siren song. I'm not thinking about it. It can be in front of me. I can smell it. I just don't give a rat's ass about food. Yeah. Right. That is liberating. So powerful. Yeah. That's how you do it when you want to actually show up for the rest of your life. And then there's also the spiritual fasting where you're like, all right, I'm going to go in. I'm going to use this the way it's been used traditionally throughout the world to reach deeper states of consciousness. And that's just a different thing, but Uh it's, it feels wrong to talk about fasting without including the rich spiritual heritage of fasting in there. Mm. And that's why like, this is not your mama's fasting book. It's here's the ways to cheat on fasting because what are the results you want? You wanted to either lose weight. You wanted to have a metabolism that works. So you have more energy or maybe you wanted to fix your gut. Mm. And there are hacks that let you do all three and still be a high functioning human versus this idea that, oh, we're all just going to stop eating for 24 hours at a time. Most people just melt down when they do it. Right. Uh, That was one of my questions for you, Dave, Um, because there is this big debate on a pure water fast versus, you know, having your bulletproof coffee in the morning. And I, I think you answered that. How do you feel about a pure 
pure water fast or how do you even feel about i i've seen people doing these dry fasts these days and that kind of blows my mind you know i guess there's there's two questions in there um let's with a water fast if you actually do well on a water fast at least have some salt like salt is so uh-huh. important yeah. <laughs> yeah the mice didn't have salt right and so yeah, you can get there. It's just mean spirited to tell people mm-hmm. who have never fasted before, who have weight to lose, who have actually been fat uh, to do that. And it's great. You're like, Oh, I've always run triathlons. I've, you know, I've, I've always been in shape my whole life and I just do my water fasting and you should too. These are people who have never had mold poisoning. They never had chronic fatigue syndrome. They've never had obesity. They've never had prediabetes. They've never had high risk of stroke and heart attack. By the way, I've had all of those things. <laughs> so, <laughs> like I have lived this. And I'll yeah. tell you, those people will fail when they go on a water only fast, unless they have a huge amount of spare time. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't have to work for a week. My kids are not home. I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to get dizzy and I'm going to feel really <laughs> crappy, right? And I'm going to be sort of like a lump here and maybe I'll watch some Netflix. <laughs> it, it's just not going to work. And so it's mean and it sets a high bar. I feel like it's the same mindset of the calories in, calories out. Mm-hmm. Like these are people sitting in judgment saying, oh, if these fat people would just stop eating so much and they would just exercise more, they would just lose weight because they're just calories in, calories out. It's a lie. It, it's not calories in, calories out. It never was. And that was fiction, but it was fiction that created a great deal of shame. So you tell someone who's new to fasting, who has 40 pounds to lose, just have water uh, for, for the morning. They're just going to fail and they're, they're going to be miserable. Uh-huh. And, one thing I've learned after 10 years of, of teaching people these bulletproof methods, if it sucks, you won't do it for very long. This yeah. is why I would lose 25 pounds and gain 35 pounds, lose 35 count, pounds, gain 45 pounds. Mm. Because it's just like eating kale. Kale sucks. <laughs> it's actually bad for you. It gives you cravings and it tastes bad. So very few people eat kale all the time. Or if they do, they force themselves to or they cover it in bacon to make it edible. <laughs> it's still bad for you. Right. So like, let's focus on foods that actually are satisfying and and all of that. And so I would say, especially for people with real weight to lose, doing it the way I'm talking about, A, I have 10 years of people doing the Bulletproof diet, you know, half a million copies and and just huge amounts of weight lost and years and years of endorsements for people going, I can't believe I just lost all this weight and I was never hungry and it didn't take any work. And I, Mm -hmm. my brain works better than it did before instead of the way it, it is when you lose weight the way I used to on a low calorie diet or a low fat diet, you feel like a zombie. Be. And you're like, what was I going to say? Why did I open the fridge? Where are my car keys? And you're just, you're a zombie. Nobody wants that. Yeah. Yeah. So th- that's my answer to the water fasting. If you want to do it, there are like 10 day medically supervised water fasts. You can do at clinics. There is value to it. So I, I don't want to say it doesn't work. I'm just saying, why, w- why do you want to take more pain than you need to? Uh-huh. I would say, get your metabolism really strong using the stuff that I'm teaching and then do a water fast. You're like, oh, I've got this. But if you want to start with a water fast, like why would you start with an Ironman? Maybe you should start with running a right. kilometer. I, <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. To me, uh, because I use the intermittent fasting and it's just so, it's so easy and it's so beneficial. Um, you know, it's amazing what you were saying when you have that realization of you're no longer thinking about food and you've, all you've had is a cup of coffee or maybe two, you know, I have bulletproof coffee in the morning and I literally don't think about food. I mean, food has been an addiction for me for a long time. Uh, especially throughout my pro football career, where, like you said, I'm constantly being bombarded by the old school information, the old school sort of bodybuilder athlete information of you've got to eat every three hours to maintain your muscle mass. And that can really just drive you crazy. I remember telling friends and family during my athletic career that I had a love-hate relationship with food because I felt like I was just hammering the calories down and wasn't even enjoying it anymore yeah you know and with fasting i really enjoy food again because i eat maybe two meals a day uh towards the end of the day and i just get really nutrient dense you know grass-fed meat good veggies high fat you know and it's just so enjoyable and i'm not looking for those you know, the cookies and the cakes, because I love me some pastries and I love all of that stuff too, Of course, you know? Um, 
One thing uh, I'd love for you, there's two things I'm curious if you could give a little bit more breakdown because autophagy to me is maybe the greatest uh, outcome of fasting. And I know there's a lot of good stuff happening in your body when you're fasting, but autophagy is really one of those things, maybe a key component in this COVID era that we find ourselves in. We're keeping people's immune systems high and as healthy as possible. Can you talk about, I know you mentioned it a little bit, but really slow down and yeah. give us what autophagy is and what's happening there. The body has a, a, a certain limit on the amount of enzymes it can produce. And what enzymes do is they make it easy to do a chemical reaction. So most of the things in your body are driven by an enzyme. So if it would take 100 calories to do something without an enzyme, you add an enzyme and it takes one calorie to do it. So these are sort of like shortcuts biologically. And when you don't eat, all of the, all of the enzyme manufacturing capacity that could have gone into digesting the steak that you didn't eat, the body says, oh, what else can I use these enzymes for? And it says, I'm going to use them for doing a cellular cleanup. Mm. And it goes through the body and it says, okay, what are the cells that are the weakest and the least performing? The precancerous cells, um, cells that may be infected, cells that don't have a strong metabolism. And it says, I have the capacity to remove those and then build new, stronger, healthier cells in their place. But if instead that capacity goes, I got to eat the chicken breast, eat the steak, eat, you know, eat the egg, eat everything all the time. It never has a chance to do that. Especially if you're eating that midnight snack before you go to bed, there's never a chance for it. Right. And if you do intermittent fasting and maybe an occasional longer fast, even what you find is that the body naturally does that cleanup. And the, the end result of that is that your body makes more energy all the time because you got rid of the weak links and the body will not get rid of the weak links because it's too busy digesting all the time and because it knows it doesn't have to because there's an abundance of food because it never experiences even a brief period without food. So you kind of program weakness by eating all the time, and autophagy happens only when the body says, I got nothing else to do. I guess I should start cleaning house. Mm. And it, it's very powerful from an aging perspective. And you know, I, I've written a, a very detailed book on aging called superhuman. Yeah. I'm talking about my plan to live to at least 180. Not a lot of people know I'm 74. I love that. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, okay, not really. I'm 48. But uh, I am getting younger cognitively. And, and because of intermittent fasting, because of the other things I do, I have the arterial flexibility of a 24 year old. I have the neurological response time, like measured with a computer of a 20 year old. Mm. Um, and, you know, the, the list goes on. But this is possible because my body has the time and the resources to rebuild itself and get rid of the junk. And something else that's really missing from the world of fasting that I thought merited inclusion in a book, in fact, just the, the willingness to write the book, is that there are supplements you can take during fasting that make it work better. And there are supplements you could take during a fast that ruin a fast. And sorting through all the many different options is, uh, is a lot of work, but I, I did it. And one of the things that stands out as an important supplement during fasting is activated charcoal. Mm. I started doing that after reading Superhuman. Dude. Oh, nice. You did? Yeah. Charcoal is, is fascinating because it's been used in every culture everywhere. Anytime you have an upset stomach, you take charcoal. And you, know, you go to India or Nepal and like it's there on street corners. It's like they sell little charcoal tablets. 7-Eleven has little charcoal tablets. And you just know if anything's off, uh, you just take that and you feel better. But what charcoal does is it has a huge amount of surface area. Imagine you take a, a sheet of paper, you crumple it to a little ball. Charcoal molecules are like that. And they're really strongly negatively charged. So they attract positively charged toxins to them. Mm. When you fast, one thing that happens is your gut bacteria, they freak out. They're like, there's no food here. Mm. And when they don't have any food, it triggers their fear response. When they are afraid, we'll see bacteria can't really run away. They can't really hide. They can they can kill. So how do they do that? They make something called lipopolysaccharide or LPS. And this is a substance that's very well known and it crosses the gut barrier very easily and it crosses the blood brain barrier and it causes systemic inflammation and lowers the function of your mitochondria. Well, it just so happens that activated charcoal binds to LPS so it can't be absorbed by the body. Mm. 
Mm. So if you're fasting, especially if you're doing a water or just a black coffee a kind of a fast, um, you're going to say, wow, okay, if I take some charcoal, I have way fewer cravings because when LPS hits the brain, the brain freaks out and goes, I've just been poisoned. It doesn't necessarily know it was from gut bacteria. Since I've been poisoned, could I please have some sugar so that I can fight off this toxin? And then you get a sugar craving. So activated charcoal during a fast is awesome, but oh, you broke your water only fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Okay. And then the other thing, it's like, it's so easy to poke holes in water only fasting. It's, it's ridiculous. I love that, man. Um, the other thing that you could do is something called proteolytic enzymes. And this is also just missing from the world of fasting. And these are enzymes that you can take that help the body break down junk proteins. And since you're already turning off the, the enzyme production that was used to make food, so it can be used for healing the body, you can take something called serapeptase and there's nanokinase. And I mentioned several other formulas in the book. And what these are is external sources of enzymes the body can use to break down scar tissue. So there's no calories in there. It's not going to break your fast, but what it's going to do is it's going to give you more of the power to do autophagy. And you see softening of skin, you see reduction of adhesions and organs, and you see breaking down of inflammatory autoimmune molecules in the blood. So if you're fasting, you know, what should you take and what should you not take? Uh, there's also a chapter in the book where I talk about the barfy four, uh, things you can take <laughs> during a fast that will make you throw up. And these are, <laughs> these are things you don't want to take when you're fasting. You should take it when you break your fast. So it, it's a fascinating world. But what I wanted to do was take the decade of doing this with a community of you know, tens of thousands of people and share that knowledge. Because the other thing that's happening right now is what I call the fasting trap. Mm. And I was a raw vegan for a while mm. uh, on just all the different experiments I've done for about a year and a half or so before it really broke me. It took me a while to heal myself. And by the way, there are tons of people who get made sick by vegan diets. Sorry, I wish they worked. They just don't. If you're uh -huh. under 25, you can also live on pizza and beer. It's just not a good idea. <laughs> um, so don't burn out what you got by eating garbage fats. Anyway, the fasting trap, the vegan trap, and the keto trap are all the same thing. And it's a basic human cognitive loop we get stuck in. And it goes like this. I'm going to make this change in my diet. Wow, I feel really good. In the case of the vegan diet, you stopped eating junk food. Congratulations, you, you improved yourself. In the case of keto, you just got ketones. Woohoo, you feel great. Fasting, you got ketones and autophagy. You feel great as well. Mm. Okay. Now you say, okay, I've done this for six weeks. I've lost weight. My, I like how I feel. I know this works. It is my new lifestyle. I am firmly committed because I never want to feel the way I felt before. Then something starts to go wrong. <laughs> and you go, it can't be what I'm doing because I already know it works. Mm. Therefore, I need to be even more vegan. I'm going to take out honey because a bee touched it. I'm not thinking mm. about the fact that a bee touched everything else you ate as well. That's vegan logic for you. I can't explain it. But anyway, <laughs> um, you... <laughs> That's a whole other podcast, man. <laughs> but what you end up with is you go, okay, I'm going to do more of this. And if you're keto, I, I, I did this in the nineties. Uh, I lost weight on the Atkins diet, which was, you know, keto mm. with the wrong proteins and the wrong fats. It's one of the mm. big reasons I came up with Bulletproof is it matters which protein and which fat you do. It doesn't work if you just eat pork rinds all the time and cream cheese, it works for a little while. And so you, you, I'd go to a low carb thing and, and it's like everyone there's weighs 300 pounds. I'm, I'm like, it doesn't look like it works. I'm like, oh no, I used to weigh 500 pounds, but I've been plateaued. I know it's because I'm eating 15 grams of carbs per day. If I could only get down to 10 grams, I know I'll lose weight again. And so they're like, like continuing on the thing that used to work because it used to work instead of acknowledging it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Just like me, I worked out an hour and a half a day, six days a week. I still weigh 300 pounds. Why did it take me 18 months to keep doing something that didn't work? Yeah right? Yeah. Because I believed it would work. So with fasting, what I'm seeing now is women hit the wall first. Mm. And when women over fast, especially women with a substantial amount of weight to lose, if you start intermittent fasting every single morning, especially just with water or black coffee without using the other fasting hacks, what usually happens is you feel great, right? But then after about four to six weeks, the first thing that goes is your sleep quality. And like, I wake up in the morning and I feel like I didn't sleep. Right. And if you track your sleep on an aura ring, like I do, you start seeing results that aren't good. And then it's like, huh, my cycle, I'm normally pretty regular, but it's not the same. Like I, I'm noticing discrepancies and then like, oh, my hair is starting to get thin and fall out. What the heck? Mm. Right. What happened there is the fasting trap, which is 
it works. So I did it all the time. So the right dose of fasting is important. And in men, it looks like this. It, for men, it's usually six to eight weeks before it hits. If you were to say, I'm going to start intermittent fasting every day when your body's not ready, is not trained, and you're not metabolically fit. Um, by the way, I can do intermittent fasting. I do it six days a week. Um, uh -huh. And the other day, I intentionally have breakfast just because I want flexibility metabolically. I and do besides, that too. Do you? Okay. It, it's so much healthier, Evan, yeah. to do it that way. It, you know, consistency is the enemy for the body. Like never, it should always be ready for whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but with guys, if you over fast or you're over keto or you're vegan, um, what happens is first you're like, Hmm, my sleep quality isn't uh, where I want it. I wake up, I don't feel as good. And then I wake up without a kickstand and the vegan diet will do that more quickly than a keto diet, by the way. Uh, and then kickstand, you mean hard on? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that's what, uh, I mean, you got, got to have a good name for it in the morning, but you wake up, you're like, there's nothing going on. All right, what's what's up? What that right. is, is you over fasted uh -huh. and you over fasted with the body's like, I got too much stress here. I just don't need to, I don't need to put any energy towards that third F word. Cause I'm, you know, I, I don't have enough, uh -huh. right? My stress hormones are too high. And then it's also thinning of hair for guys. So the answer to that is you mix up your fasting. Like when you're getting going, especially for women, if intermittent fasting every other day is a really good strategy. But when you have breakfast, only protein and fat, not carbs, right? If you have your carbs at dinner and mm. when you do something like that, then you're like, oh, you know, I've done this for a month or two. I'm really into this. Like I've lost weight. I like how I feel. And maybe you're like, okay, I'm just going to eat breakfast on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm going to do a 24 hour fast because now it doesn't feel like work. I could just go, you know. Uh, 24 hours. And right now, if you're listening, going, what do you mean 24 hours without food? I would die. It, it, it looks like this. Okay. You have dinner around five or six, and then you go four hours uh, before you go to bed. Then you sleep eight hours. You got your 12 hours. And then you say, okay, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to bulletproof coffee for breakfast, or I'll just have black coffee or whatever you decide you're going to do. Right. And then at lunchtime, you're like, you know what? If I can just skip lunch and wait till dinner, all I've done a 24 hour fast. It's not that hard. It's literally asking yourself to go four or five more hours past lunch without eating. And like, mm -hmm. you can do that. Yeah. But if instead you're like, I know that this one meal a day, it sounds like, oh, mad. It's, it's very manly. I'm going to do uh -huh. OMAD today. <laughs> right. If you do that, what ends up happening is, okay, it, it's easy to do that once or twice a week. It's fantastic. But if you do it every single day, it may just be too much of a, a stressor. Just like, you know what happens if you overtrain, Evan, right? You, you hit heavy weights at the gym every day. You never recover yeah. and you don't improve anymore. It's the same with fasting. So it's okay to have breakfast sometimes. Just mm -hmm. mix it up. Yeah. I love that, man. I've definitely fallen off the cliff a few times yeah. uh, falling into that keto trap for sure. Uh, where it's like all of a sudden it's like cake, cookies, fucking ice cream. And I'm like, ah, oh, what happened? You know, but it's, it's exactly what you're saying. You know, and you it's probably that good that you did that. I mean, you, you don't want to spike your blood sugar that much, but if you're long-term keto or long-term intermittent fasting like that, you can become less able to digest carbs. Mm. In fact, there's studies that show insulin resistance in people who are keto. And then the hardcore keto people, which are the equivalent of the, the water only fasting people, they're, they're dogmatic oh. purists, mm -hmm. uh, less interested in like results orientation versus like, I did it the right way. Um, <laughs> It, 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 you run into exactly the, the same, the same kind of a thing where, where okay, you, you have to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. I know we're winding down uh, two things. Maybe you could shout out, maybe there's a, a opportunity for a shout out for a product, but prebiotic fiber. How do people get that? Is that powder right. form? Um, so I, I, full disclosure, I, I do I did formulate one for Bulletproof. I'm not here to sell my prebiotic fiber. I'll tell you its name and I'll tell you what's in it if you want to go find some other formula. <laughs> right? like, I'm just, I'm, I, mean, I would like you to read my book. That's the big win for you uh, listening to this. And it, by the way, when you read the book, or when you buy the book, send the receipt to fastthisway.com and I will spend two weeks teaching my book to you. I, I was a teacher at the University mm. of California for five years. I love teaching and I haven't done it for my books. So Every day, video lesson, live calls with me, community of at least 10,000 people all fasting together, not for the whole two weeks, but I'm going to teach you each of the hacks and walk you through the book. I'll hold your hand for free <laughs> if you awesome. just buy the book because I, I just, I care so much about this. Yeah. And here's what's in the prebiotic fiber. So the one I make for Bulletproof is called Inner Fuel. Mm. 
And it's a mix of three different types of prebiotic fiber. These are all basically different types of plant sap. And the bacteria, the good guys in your gut, they love it, but your body can't digest it. And this is why it's such an elegant hack. I quadrupled the number of species of gut bacteria that I have, which is a really good anti-aging marker by using this formula. So I know that it works. The number one ingredient in there is called acacia gum fiber. Mm. This is a tree from Africa. And there's so many studies showing acacia gum is just powerful for feeding good gut, good gut bacteria. There's also larch arabinogalactin, which is another type of tree sap. And then there is hydrolyzed guar gum. Mm. So you can go out and Google all three of those, or you could look for bulletproof inner fuel. And then on the ingredients label, it tells you what's in there. But that combination of those three, um, the way I put it together, uh, I'm very happy with the results. And also there's no flavorings or anything else in there. So you can add it to tea, coffee, you can mix it into any kind of a smoothie and it suppresses hunger. So one thing that I do with that is if I'm, if I'm breaking a fast, I will take an extra scoop of that and I'll take some of the Bulletproof MCT oil. And like, say I'm, you know, stir frying some grass-fed lamb. I, mm. I actually live on an organic farm. We raise lamb. Mm. <laughs> so there's some That's ground awesome. lamb. I'll throw two scoops of inner fuel in there because it just disappears. It kind of soaks up some of the liquid, but you can't see or taste it. And I'll add some MCT oil. And then I eat that meal. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so full. Like I have so much energy and, and like all of my hunger hormones are just like pummeled. And I just don't care about food for so long. And, and it's, you know, I might have two meals that day. I might have one meal that day, but man, that meal sticks to my ribs mm -hmm. in a way that is so good. And, yeah. and it's that freedom from cravings. Yeah. Uh, but I will tell you, if I was to add MSG to that meal, mm. it would blow it all up. If I added <laughs> omega-6 fats, those bad fats that are the only fats vegetables can make, can make, that's one of the reasons a vegan diet doesn't work over time. If you eat a lot of canola, soy, corn, safflower, sunflower, all those things, uh. What that does is those trigger cravings. So even if you put the stuff in that cancels cravings, if you add a bunch of stuff that has cravings, I promise you an hour after that meal, you're like, can I have some ice cream? Mm. Right. And so it's really a matter of eating food that doesn't make you hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next question I have for you is collagen. Are you still on? Is, is oh collagen? man, I'm the guy who put collagen on the map. Like, like the reason collagen is famous is bulletproof. No and doubt. there's lots of companies that make it now of varying qualities, uh -huh. but collagen is magic, but you can't take collagen during a fast because it's a source of protein. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Right? So throwing collagen in your bulletproof coffee in the morning will, it not. will break a fast. Okay. What you can do though, is you can have a bulletproof coffee with collagen when you break your fast. And then you'll want to eat a lot less food. Um, I have been taking 20 to 40 grams of collagen um, every single day. That's two to four scoops from the Bulletproof Collagen Canister every single day for about nine years now. And the, the trick with collagen is collagen allows you to eat more protein, more muscle protein. It, the amino acid glycine in there cancels out the negative effects of too much protein, certain amino acids that are inflammatory. So it's a way of balancing it more eating like nose to tail. Mm -hmm. And it takes seven years to replace half the collagen in your body because every mm -hmm. cell in your body eventually like leaves and then you grow new ones or you at least the components of the cells get replaced. So that means that half the collagen in my body has been created at a time when I had enough building blocks to make proper collagen. Mm -hmm. I think I'm doing pretty well for a guy who's 48 years old. Uh, and I believe that the reason for that and the reason that hair grows faster and nails are thicker, all this stuff, it's regular collagen. The studies are so abundant about how good collagen is for us. So when you are eating, you should eat collagen every day, especially if you're eating a higher amount of protein. It's necessary. And it's yep. something that helps with hunger because glycine, the primary amino acid in collagen, uh, is something that helps you feel full. And it is, in fact, anytime I'm cooking like a, a mix of meat and vegetables in a pan, you will always see me adding two scoops of inner fuel, two scoops of collagen to it because it goes away. You can't see, you can't taste it, you can't smell it, you can't see it. But Ew. a lot of collagens taste like, or they smell like socks, like there's a... Uh -huh. Yeah. A, a kind of a stinky flavor that yeah. the way we make our collagen is different and it doesn't do that. So it has in, like, you can put it in water and drink it and it's not bad. My kids actually like, like, to, like take powder and just lick it. Um, I so, it, um, I, I would, I would just do that. It, it's I, awesome. 
And one of my favorite hacks I got from you, uh, actually in Superhuman, you talk about it, is if you have the collagen before bed, your dreams are just outrageous. Nice. It's helping you. That's also the glycine amino acid. And right. it's funny because I'm telling people don't eat before bed, except if you wake up at three or four in the morning, you can have collagen, you can have MCT oil just a little bit before bed. And it, and it basically triggers some stuff in the brain so you can sleep through the night. Mm -hmm. And so many people have just been like, oh, I could always woke up at three with racing thoughts and I take my collagen before bed. The reason that works is that it's already, at least the bulletproof stuff, it's pre-digested. Um, it's broken down, not with heat and acid, but it's broken down with enzymes. So it's what's called dye and tripeptides, little tiny fragments the body can just absorb quickly. Mm. And it probably breaks a fast, but it doesn't trigger all the, all the metabolic problems that happen if you were to have, you know, a scoop of ice cream or some peanut butter before bed. Like it's, it's a, a different biological process, but you don't want to have, you know, a huge amount of it. If we're talking, you know, five, 10 grams is usually enough to make people sleep better. Awesome. Um, Dave, I have to say, you know, coming out of my football career, a big part of my mission is to help my football brethren who are dealing with potential chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE, yep. early onset dementia and Alzheimer's. And for me, one of the most profound aspects of the Bulletproof Way, Bulletproof Coffee, is the impact it's had on my brain and my cognitive oh, function. Man. And so I think if there's any way we can work together or if you work with NFL teams or getting you more involved in the NFL and with NFL players. I would. I'd love to, Evan. I'm, I'm always happy to talk to a team nutritionist or talk to a team. I mean, you you certainly know about Nick Foles. I, yeah. I was really honored. He, he mentioned Bulletproof Coffee six times in his book. There was no financial deal there. That was just him. Like he came on the show. He's like, here's all the Bulletproof supplements I took before you know the big game. That's and amazing. he makes Bulletproof Coffee for his team. But he, here's what I want to share. Okay. If you have ketones present in your brain and someone rings your bell, mm the ketones are directly anti-inflammatory and there are actually studies showing that ketones are really good for you. And the source of ketones that I highly recommend is the C8 MCT oil. Um, there's reasons it's better than ketone salts and esters and all those other things. I've interviewed a guy who spent 40 years studying ketones who actually studied with Hans Krebs, the guy who invented the Krebs cycle. And mm -hmm. He's, he's saying, I think ketone salts are actually um, causing mitochondrial harm. So I want everyone who gets hit in the head yeah. to already be preloaded with ketones. Yeah. So the brain has an anti-inflammatory molecule and there's stuff you should do with progesterone and everything afterwards. But I think we can do harm reduction so that Definitely. we're more resilient when we take a hit. And I've had a couple serious hits to the head um, over the last uh, about five years. I, a couple of them, you know, one of them, I was you know, nauseous, dizzy couldn't, couldn't play go fish with my kids and swore all the time, like pretty serious hit uh -huh. to the head. And it's, it's entirely possible to recover. It takes the right food, no omega-6 fats. And this is really big for football players. Stop eating seed oils. Just, you have to stop doing that because it's setting you up to have that damage. And so you're eating more saturated fats, grass fed or nothing. Don't eat industrial animals, which cause inflammation too. And good amounts of butter, Eggs, gently cooked egg yolks, all that stuff is going to be really, really good for your cell membrane integrity. Have ketones present when you're playing. Mm. Have the mitochondrial precursors, things like PQQ, that's in the unfair advantage product that we make, and things like Keto Prime, the other product that we make, which has something called oxaloacetate in it. These are all mitochondrial superchargers. Mm. So all of a sudden, like, all right, I was like showing up on the field and I'm all dialed in. And if someone hits you in the head, your body can handle the inflammation and it doesn't get the scarring in the brain. And then if you do get hit, you go into the hyperbaric thing. Yeah. And my wife also had a major TBI. And uh, man, hyperbaric, it's life-changing. Yeah. But you know, there, there's work to do. So if, if I can help, man, reach out. I'm, I'm all in. I love that, man. I love that. It, it's been, I have to say, you know, this switch in my lifestyle, moving into this way of eating and this way of, of being has been profound. All the other shit I do, meditation, the nootropics, because I know you're a big fan of those as well. Oh, yeah. and, and they've been a huge help to me, especially coming out of my football career where I took a shitload of Adderall which was just left me a complete wreck. 
Oh yeah. You know, being able to come to things like Pramiracetam, Modafinil, et cetera, has been profound, but the biggest change has been in my nutrition and how I eat. Oh, and I, man, I, I really this. thank you for that. And uh, I think that if more football players knew that, I wish I knew that, you know, during my career. It, I am ketones uh, present it can, can help protect my brain. That's huge. You know, I, I feel I've, I've spoken to a few team nutritionists and some of them are on board with this. Uh, Dr. Kate Shanahan uh, and I've had a couple interviews and, and I, I'm like, you can't tell people to just like go pound carbs like that. And, and the type of oil really matters. So you get like one type of nutritionist who's really into this, uh -huh. but then you get other ones who kind of fall for this. Oh, like go plant-based and, and like, right that is setting a brain up for just not having what it takes. And, and I say this, having been a devout vegan, <laughs> like, right. It, I had to heal from that. <laughs> and if, if you're flying all the time, you got circadian disruption, you're taking hits on the field, you're training a lot, man, you need every advantage so that at the end of your career, you can walk, you're not in pain and you can think and love and feel the way you're supposed to. And if that didn't happen because you ate like crap because you didn't know any better or for whatever reason, it's reversible. You can fix all of it. You just have to know the, the stuff to do. A lot of the stuff I'm doing at Upgrade Labs, uh, my company there around recovery it is so applicable to that. And I, I see a day in the future, right? You know, there's Upgrade Labs associated with teams because like, hey, our guys needed to recover faster. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, Dave, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome, Evan. And for listeners, the book is Fast This Way. You go to fastthisway.com, send me your receipt. I'm going to teach you everything in the book because I just, I want people to walk around with so much energy that they're nice to each other. And that's what this is all about. I love that, man. I love that. We need that. We, we need do more, indeed. We need more love and light in the world, man. Yes. Um, well, dude, you're, it's such a pleasure. Um, I have an organization called Athletes for Care, which really hones in on holistic health practices for pro athletes and collegiate athletes coming out of their career and looking for a community and ways to re-identify themselves in life after sports. So if there's any way we can work together there, I'd love to plug you into that. All right. Uh, let's, let's talk after the show mm -hmm. and uh, let's get all of them reading fast this way. Intermittent yeah. fasting is you have to have autophagy. If you've been an athlete for a while, you've got to clean up all the scar tissue and all that. So we can get them started there and happy to have a conversation, you know, just get a big Facebook group together or a big webinar and we'll just, let's talk to everyone. We'll do some custom stuff for athletes. Perfect, man. Awesome. Thank Thanks, Evan. Thank you, man. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you got as much out of that as I did. Lots of love to you all. I greatly appreciate your support and your listenership. If this resonated with you and you think it would help someone you know, please share it with them. That is the greatest way you can support me and this show. Lots of love to all you guys out there. Thanks again to Dave. You're the man. And until next time, I'll see you all on the flip side. Peace. <laughs>